With the recent unveiling of NVIDIA's new lineup, the RTX 20 series, AMD seems to be falling further and further behind in terms of performance. Now more than ever, in the minds of average consumers, NVIDIA is the only choice, be it with discounted 10 series cards, or for those with deep pockets, the new ones. And even AMD enthusiasts seem disillusioned with the prospect of ever seeing a truly great GPU from Team Red. So is AMD just going to keep focusing on entry-level and mid-range cards? Have they simply given up on the high-end? Do they have an answer to the RTX cards? This is what Lisa Su, AMD's current CEO, had to say back in January of 2018. We invested more in research and development in 2017 than we did in 2016, and we will invest more in 2018 than in 2017. As our revenue grows, it gives us the opportunity to invest more. I think from my standpoint, those investments tend to be very much along the lines of expanding our capability, particularly in the graphics space. So on the surface at least, it would seem AMD haven't given up on the graphics race. If anything, they appear to be investing in it more than ever. But in what exactly are they investing all these research and development resources in? On the GPU side, we have multiple teams that are looking at how to improve the instruction set as you go forward. And I would say that we are thinking on the compute aspect of GPUs. Does this mean that AMD is investing more in the graphics compute business and focusing less in gaming? I think there is a separation. You will see us move on compute and we're very committed to gaming so that's not going to change but you will see us do more purpose-built products for the compute side of things. Basically what Lisa was saying is that the real money for selling AMD's graphics technology is in compute which is mainly focused on large data centers in the enterprise sector, not in the gaming market. Although, can you think of a recently announced gaming product that makes heavy use of compute? So now that we know the true focus of AMD's efforts, how will this strategy pan out and what will it mean for gamers and especially AMD fans going forward? We are looking at all forms of multi-chip technologies. I think that Interposer is one that we're using and using widely in production today, but we have a tremendous amount of research going on in this area of how do we put chips together and so you'll see us do more. I think this will be an area that we will continue to be investing in and be aggressive. Remember, this was back in January, so from Lisa's comments earlier in the year, it would seem that AMD's strategy is focused primarily on the enterprise with their Radeon Instinct compute cards and that the way they will compete with Nvidia in the gaming market is by using multi-chip technologies, similar to what we've seen with Ryzen CPUs and especially the beastly Threadripper CPUs. Well, on first inspection, yes, but we'll get to that in a moment. On the 25th of April, AMD shared this via their Twitter news account. 7 nanometer Radeon Instinct product for machine learning is running in our labs. And not too long after, on the 5th of June at Computex, AMD announced the following. 7 nanometer Radeon Instinct has started sampling to customers and will launch in both server and workstation in the second half of 2018. Note that this isn't Navi, this is still the 5th gen GCN microarchitecture that we know in the form of the various Vega GPUs, but with the advantages that 7 nanometers brings, namely higher performance, and we will look at the numbers in a moment. So we know that there already exists a 7 nanometer Vega graphics chip and that its launch into the server and workstation markets is imminent as we're now fast approaching the end of the year. But all that AMD had to say about the gaming market was this. We're just starting with Vega overall. We're committed to bringing a new graphics product every year consistently. David Wang also said, we're in the process of adding machine learning capabilities to Radeon Instinct, like Denoise, and he was talking about ray tracing rendering. Note that this is somewhat similar to what the Tensor cores are doing in the RTX cards when it comes to improving image quality, using hardware level machine learning to aid with better rendering. 
Also note that hybrid rendering is part of the open source Radiant Pro render ecosystem. This is something we'll come back to in a moment. At this stage, David Wang was referring specifically to traditional rendering inside tools like Maya, Blender, etc., and not necessarily about real-time ray tracing in games. But we can expect these technologies to be on AMD's sites when it comes to gaming as well. In fact, at Computex, they showed a demo running on Cinema 4D that allowed artists to render ray tracing in real time as a preview option before rendering the final image. More tellingly of AMD's plans for gaming GPUs is a quote that most of you will now be familiar with. For all of you gamers out there, we are definitely bringing 7 nanometer GPUs to gaming as well, so stay tuned on that. Now it's true that Lisa didn't say these would be Vega gaming GPUs, and she also didn't mention when these would be coming out. But why would Lisa mention this after they've already shown the GPU roadmap, which clearly shows Navi at 7 nanometer? Why place emphasis on a 7 nanometer GPU for gaming, as if to try and reassure gamers, when it's already clearly visible on the roadmap that this will be the case? The reason why is because at Computex, Lisa still wasn't sure that 7 nanometer Vega for gaming would be feasible. But she also didn't want to discard that option, so that's why she didn't explicitly mention Vega, but rather that a 7 nanometer GPU for gaming would be coming. So is a 7 nanometer Vega gaming GPU coming to market before the end of 2018? As David Wang said, AMD is launching a new GPU product every year. He stressed this a couple of times during his talk at Computex. You could say that the Vega 56 Nano was that new product, or that the rumored 12 nanometer Polaris refresh cards are going to be this new product, and that could very well be the case, but those feel more like refreshes of existing products, while a 7 nanometer graphics card for gaming would be more akin to the second generation of Ryzen CPUs, which feels to me more like a new product rather than a refresh. To me at least, judging by what Lisa Su and David Wang said at Computex, the new product that AMD has in line for this year is indeed a 7 nanometer RX Vega gaming card, which will be the same as the Radeon Instinct card, but tailored to the gaming market. There's really only one obstacle for that to be a reality, as we'll see in a second. By the way, here's another thing to think about. Guess who knows exactly what graphics cards AMD is releasing, and when, outside of AMD? Can you guess who already has access to those Radeon Instinct samples? If you guessed Nvidia, you'd be right on the money. There are only two players in the GPU market. You really think they don't know exactly what the other one is brewing up in their labs? I suspect they do. Nvidia probably knows what Vega 7 nanometer is capable of, and AMD also likely knew about the RTX cards for a while. The RTX cards basically make use of Microsoft's DirectX ray tracing API, which has been in development for a long while now. And this API makes particularly good use of the compute capabilities of GPUs. So remember way back in January when Lisa Su was talking about investing in compute? It's likely that she wasn't referring exclusively to the enterprise sector, but to real-time ray tracing as well, all the way back in January. Traditionally, AMD has had the best cards for these types of tasks, so the writing was on the wall for Nvidia as far as compute performance now mattering for gamers goes. A lot of reviewers have been asking themselves, why did Nvidia rush RTX to the market when there is no competition and there aren't even any games that support ray tracing yet? Well, I think it's possible that Nvidia rushed the RTX cards out because they knew that a Vega 7 nanometer gaming card is coming and that it will be a beast at compute and that it will also include hardware-based real-time ray tracing tech. So Nvidia decided to make the smart move of being the first to the market with real-time ray tracing. This lets them gain consumer mindshare and also get to the developers before AMD does. So yes, this could be one of the reasons why the RTX launch was rushed. Okay, so let's say that my wild speculation regarding a launch of a 7 nanometer gaming card soon is actually right. 
And in case you didn't know, I actually predicted the RTX cards being launched with ray tracing all the way back in March of this year, so maybe I am onto something here. What can we expect from these new 7nm Vega gaming cards in terms of performance? According to AMD slides, the 7nm Vega gaming card will be 35% faster than Vega 64 for traditional shader rendering. So we're not looking at ray tracing here, we're looking at traditional rendering. So if we look at this Far Cry 5 benchmark from the Gamers Nexus RTX review, and we add 35% performance to the Vega 64 result, the Vega 7nm gaming card will land somewhere between the 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080. That obviously means that the 2080 Ti would still be the king of the hill as far as performance goes, but if the Vega 7nm cards come in at an attractive price point, they might just be an appealing alternative. In fact, they might be the only option for the majority of gamers considering how much the RTX cards cost. How cheap would this new Vega card need to be to attract the attention and wallets of the average PC gamer? Probably no more than $549. If AMD priced the card at $600 for instance, Nvidia will simply price down the 10 series cards to a point where those are more attractive, at least to Nvidia fans which make up the vast majority of PC gamers. And once all of those 10 series cards are sold, well, they will lower the price of the 20 series. So $550 is the target price point at which I can see AMD really shaking up the GPU market. More expensive than that and it will simply be another failed Vega card, much like the Vega 56 and 64. Now I did previously mention that there is an obstacle that AMD will need to overcome to make 7nm gaming Vega a reality and that is HBM2's extremely high cost in addition to low production numbers and therefore low availability. You might think that Vega is cursed with having to use HBM due to its chip design where the memory stacks are part of the whole chip package, but the recently released Chinese PC slash console hybrid, the Suba Z Plus, features Vega graphics but uses GDDR5 instead of HBM2, showing that AMD can indeed re design Vega's memory system for custom solutions. I honestly can't see Vega 7nm for gaming being a reality unless AMD ditches HBM2 in favor of GDDR6, otherwise the prices will be just too high for the card to make any sense. Let's look back at performance for a second. The 35% increase over Vega 64 is of course a conservative estimate based on information from AMD themselves, but it's entirely possible that the performance is even higher because with the process shrink to 7 nanometer, they are able to increase the clock speeds and add more stream processors to the chip, so who knows how fast it would be. Note that the Vega 64 is on 14 nanometers, so it's tempting to think that at 7 nanometer, in other words, half the process size, the performance increase would be much higher, maybe something like 50%. But it's important to understand that TSMC's 7 nanometer is not exactly 7 nanometer. It's more like 10 nanometer. There's a bit of confusion here because of the actual density of these processes. 7 nanometer is mostly a marketing term at this point, but it will result in significant improvement over Vega 64. At least 35% is certain, so I think the most realistic performance level we can expect is indeed on par with the RTX 2080. Like we saw before, it would make sense for the Vega 7nm gaming card to also include hardware-based real-time ray tracing support, as hinted at at Computex and earlier this year, with the main difference being that it will be open source, unlike RTX, which is a proprietary API. And unfortunately, just like what we've seen with any other technology that AMD has launched, Developer support will be limited, so in games where the devs actually use AMD's implementation of ray tracing, the cards will outperform the RTX cards in ray tracing, possibly even the 2080 Ti, but in the vast majority of cases, developers will instead support Nvidia's ray tracing implementation instead, at least in the near future. 
Again, this suggests that the RTX cards being rushed into the market was a reaction to an impending 7nm Vega gaming card with some pretty impressive compute capabilities. Does this all seem far-fetched or maybe wishful thinking on my part? Back in March, I said in a video that Nvidia was launching a ray tracing capable card for gaming before the end of the year, and that seemed far fetched then. So, what other features will the 7 nanometer gaming Vega have? It will include a peer to peer high speed transfer system similar to NVLink, but it won't require a bridge. It will instead work on a hardware level controlled by the graphics chip. As we saw earlier, AMD already has a proven track record in this area with their implementation of Infinity Fabric in their APUs, for instance. And back in January, Lisa Su made it clear that this is an area where they are investing heavily. So to answer one of the questions we posed earlier regarding multi-chip GPUs, we probably will see something like that eventually, maybe with Navi, but not in this generation of cards. AMD have recently indicated that they haven't sorted out the latency issues that this approach creates. And what about Navi? Will that be faster than 2080 Ti? And when is it coming out? Well, that's a topic for another day, but we won't be seeing Navi at least until March next year, and it will probably only launch in the second half of 2019. There's very little we know about it, except that it's also on 7 nanometers. AMD will need something before Navi in order to compete with Nvidia, and I don't think the supposed upcoming Polaris refresh is enough to keep AMD relevant. So that's it for now. I do believe that Vega 7 nanometer gaming will be a thing, and it will be out within the next three months. If you think this is wishful thinking, or if you think AMD has simply given up on gamers, then present your arguments in the comments below. Thank you for watching my musings and not so wild predictions, and if you like my content, then consider subscribing to my channel and share this video on social media as that really helps. Until the next one. For all of you gamers out there, we are definitely bringing 7 nanometer GPUs to gaming as well, so stay tuned on that.